Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, we're gonna go over how to set up and program your Valentine 1 Gen 2 uh, to optimize the performance, cut down on false alerts, and basically help create the experience that you want. Now for this video, we're gonna be going over how to actually program your V1 using your phone. Uh, you can do some basic programming in the V1 itself, which I'm gonna be covering in a separate video, but uh, you can actually do a lot more from your phone. It's easier and there's more options that are available. And since most all of us have a phone, uh, we're gonna go ahead and start off by covering things from your phone. Now we're gonna be doing this programming using the V1 Connection app. It's available for both iPhone and Android. Uh, it is a free app that comes directly from Valentine 1. Uh, JBV1 for Android also allows you to do some programming and a little bit more on the Android side, uh, but V1 Connection is gonna work for both iPhone and Android, so this is gonna be kind of the universal video. Now, for those of you who'd rather read over everything, uh, on my website, I'm gonna go over all of this stuff as well if you prefer reading over everything instead of having a video walkthrough. Plus, as a bonus, at the bottom of the article, I'm also gonna share my general recommended settings for the V1, as well as the settings that I personally run on my V1 Gen 2. Now, this video is going to be current as of uh, the V1 version 4.1018, which is the initial firmware version that came out for the V1 Gen 2. Uh, as new updates come out and maybe features are added or removed or changed, uh, I'm not going to be able to update this video, but the article on my website, I am going to be able to update accordingly. So if you're watching this video, maybe a couple years down the line after I've recorded it here in 2020, uh, take a look at the article to see if there's maybe anything new. Additionally, for those of you who have previously used a V1 Gen 1, things are a little bit different here coming over to the Gen 2. Some of the features now work differently, such as custom sweeps on the Gen 1 versus custom frequencies on the Gen 2. Uh, some features still work similarly, but have been renamed. And some features like KA Guard have been removed altogether. So if you're coming from a Gen 1, take a look at the article on my website for some additional detail. So with that said, let's go ahead and head on over to the phone and dive into the programming options. All right, now first things first, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and launch a V1 connection and make sure it's connected to your Valentine 1. Uh, you'll know it's connected when you see the blue Bluetooth icon here lit up. Uh, if it's not connected, go up here and click on the Bluetooth icon, it'll be grayed out. And then it'll search for your V1, you'll tap on it and it's gonna go ahead and connect. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and head up here and you'll notice I've got a couple different profiles set up. I've got some for the V1 Gen 1, some for the Gen 2, and it basically makes it easy to preset a couple of different settings and then uh, just tap on the one that you want and it'll go ahead and push those specific settings over to your Valentine 1. Uh, now what we're going to do for this video is uh, we'll go back over here and we're going to go ahead and click this plus icon and create a new set of profiles just starting from scratch. So we'll go over here and we'll just type in video, return, and then you'll see now we're gonna go and uh, we've got a couple different sections here with different groups of settings. So we'll start with bands. So tapping on there, you see we've got a number of different options to control our different radar and laser bands. Uh, now first, starting off with uh, front laser detection and rear laser detection, uh, you can turn those on and off as needed. Uh, I like turning off front laser detection, for example. And the reason is I find the V1 falses quite a bit to laser up ahead from other oncoming vehicles. And so uh, I turn off front laser detection on my V1 and then just rely on my laser jammers instead for proper laser protection. You can do something similar for rear laser detection if you like. Maybe if your phone, for example, is causing your V1 to false to laser from the rear, you can turn it off there. Uh, and then we have control for X-band, KA-band, and K-band. Most people are probably best go ahead and turning off X-band like this. X-Band is only used actively in uh, Ohio and New Jersey and a few rural places here and there across the United States. But uh, for most of us, we're better off actually turning off X-Band to eliminate all the false alerts that we'll experience otherwise. Uh, I actually get false alerts from my iPhone sitting next to my V1. Uh, and so for that reason as well, I also like turning off X-Band. You also have the option of turning off KA-Band and K-Band. K-A-Band is used by police pretty much all over the country, so you're going to want to leave that turned on. Uh, K-Band is used by police in most places around the country. If you're in one of the places where there's really no K-Band in use, well, number one, you're lucky. Uh, number two, you can go ahead and turn off K-Band if you want, so you're not going to be reliant on some of the other filters to filter out false alerts on K-Band. Next, we'll go back over here, and then the next section is going to be for mute control. So we'll tap on that, and we've got a couple options here to mute the V1. Now this section has been modified from the V1 Gen 1. Uh, they've removed a couple things, they've renamed some of the settings, and they've basically simplified uh, the mute controls here. Now the first one is called Mute to Muted Volume, and this basically has to do with how the V1 handles muted alerts. Now with the V1s, you have not one, but two volume levels that you can control. You've got the primary volume level for when it's alerting you to a legitimate signal, and then you also have the muted volume level, which is not necessarily silent, it's a lower secondary volume level. And you can control Control those by going up to the V1 here and pressing the uh, volume up and volume down buttons like this. 
and it'll beep, of course, to let you know how loud the volume level that you've set it to is. Uh, you can also then control the muted volume level by pressing the mute button and then pressing the buttons here on top. Uh, I find that you do have to either be really quick or else it doesn't work, or better yet, uh, when you're here, press the mute button, you'll see it light up, and then you can go in here and uh, control the muted volume level. This, as you can tell, it's going to be quieter than the full alert volume. And again, this is there so that uh, when the V1 mutes itself, this is the volume that you're setting for it to drop the muted alerts to. Now, the default option with the V1 is when it's muting itself, it's just going to drop the volume to the secondary volume level. Uh, and that's what the option is for here on the phone. If you don't want that and you want it to completely totally mute, you just select that there and it's going to then drop the volume completely and totally silence the detector. But again, the default is to mute to the muted volume level that we programmed here in the V1. Uh, now, the next option is memo loud after muting. Now, the memo is basically V1 terminology for a new bogey, or basically if your detector is alerting to one signal, uh, when it detects an additional signal, it'll give you a new bogey alert tone or a memo beep, I guess, and let you know that, hey, there's another signal that's now present as well. Now, what this option is for here in the phone, it's allowing you to control the volume level of the new bogey alert tone. By default, what the V1 is going to do is when it alerts you to a new bogey, uh, it's going to alert to that signal at full volume, even if the previous alert that you've currently been listening to has been muted. Now, I find this behavior to be kind of annoying, and the reason that's the case is if I'm driving around in a parking lot, uh, in a shopping center, for example, if I've got the V1 muted due to low-speed muting or lockouts or whatever, uh, if the V1 picks up an additional signal, even though it's trying to mute everything, the new bogey alert tone will be at full volume. And this can lead to a really loud and chatty detector that's otherwise trying to be muted. So for that reason, I like going in here and actually disabling this option so that it doesn't give you the new bogey alert tones loud. Uh, if you've previously muted the alerts, uh, the new bogey alert tone will also stay muted. Now, the third option here is about uh, muting any X and K band signals back behind. This is a feature that I like because most threats are going to be up ahead. Uh, you want the V1, of course, to be able to alert you from behind. That's one of the reasons you get a detector here with... Uh, two antennas, front and rear, plus of course the arrows. Um, now rear signals are generally gonna be less of a threat. And so for that reason, if you wanna maybe quiet down the V1 a little bit, you have the option of just telling it to mute all of the uh, X and K band signals that are behind you uh, just by selecting the option here in the phone. And this is just gonna help uh, quiet down the V1 a little bit more. Now that's it for the mute control section. Uh, again, there were a couple options on the V1 Gen 1 that are no longer available here on the Gen 2. Next, heading back into the main menu, we're going to go next into the special options. So we'll tap on that, and we've got a number of new options here. Uh, the first one is going to allow us to adjust which logic mode we want our V1 to run in. Uh, there's three different logic modes that are available that you can access by long pressing the mute button like this. Uh, there's all bogeys mode. Um, there's logic mode, which is the little L, and then there's going to be advanced logic, which is the big L. And then here you've got the option to actually choose with the profile which one you want the detector to run in. Now, to explain the different logic modes real quick, these are kind of important. Uh, so starting off with all bogeys mode. With all bogeys mode, you'll see a big A on the display, and this tells the V1 to alert to all bogeys, or all signals that it sees, both visually and audibly. Uh, some people think the A means a kind of automatic mode, um, and then they're wondering why the detector is so chatty. This is actually the noisiest version of the V1. It's alerting to all of the signals that it sees. Uh, so that's all bogeys mode. Now, logic and advanced logic mode, the different L's, those are going to be doing some additional muting and filtering for the V1. Uh, now, logic mode, which we'll access again by going and long pressing the button to the little L, this is going to be alerting to all of the same signals that all bogeys is going to be alerting to, but any weak signals, it's going to be muting. Then once the signal actually gets stronger and you're getting closer to the source, then the detector will resume alerting normally. So visually alerting to everything, but muting audibly any of the weak signals. Now, advanced logic mode or the mode with the big L, this is going to be doing some additional filtering. Uh, with advanced logic mode, any weak signals are going to be completely filtered out altogether. They'll be not only audibly muted like logic mode, but they're also going to be visually just not showing up on the detector at all. Uh, once you get closer to the signal and the signal gets stronger, then it's going to go ahead and alert. Um, plus, it's going to be doing some additional filtering to try to maybe uh, filter out some door openers and stuff independent of signal strength. So advanced logic mode is going to be the quietest option here on the V1. Uh, Valentine says this is a good option for metro areas. Uh, we do find that with advanced logic mode, it is going to give you the shortest amount of range on K-band. Um, so if you see a lot of K-band, maybe running in logic mode 
would be best, um, or maybe even all bogeys, but logic mode at least filter out some of the weak signals. Advanced logic mode I think would be best if you're uh, not seeing a ton of K-band and or you want the quietest experience possible. And then the next option is if we want to run uh, USA mode, which is the default, or if we want to go over to uh, Euro mode. Now, if we switch to Euro mode, this is going to be adjusting a lot of things. One of the main things is it's going to be adjusting which frequencies the detector scans for to scan for the frequencies that are in use in Europe as opposed to the frequencies that are in use in the US. Uh, I can't verify that these are actually the optimal settings because I don't live and drive in Europe, but these are the ones that uh, Valentine chooses by default. And you can always go in and adjust with custom frequencies what frequencies the detector is going to be alerting you to. Um, there's other things that it adjusts as well, um, but pretty much if you're driving in Europe, set it to Euro mode. If you're driving in the US, leave it in USA mode. Next, the K-Verifier. This is going to be your K-band filter for, uh, let's say, blind spot falses. And, you know, it's trying to filter out a lot of BSMs, uh, uh, traffic sensors on the side of the road, things like that. Uh, so K-Verifier, for most people, you're going to want to leave it on. It helps to filter out a lot of false alerts. If you turn it off, uh, you're going to get a ton of false alerts. People find that for MRCD detection, uh, you are going to be able to do a better job detecting it with this filter turned off. But again, you get so many false alerts and the detector doesn't actually tell you the difference between MRCD and one of the 10,000 false alerts that you'll see. So it's not really useful for that. So for most people, again, just leave K-Verifier turned on uh, to help filter out false alerts. The next option is going to be for dark mode. Uh, dark mode is going to have the V1's display turned off. And when it sees alerts, it's still going to audibly alert you to say, signals, but it'll keep the display turned off. You'll still be able to see the alerts on, say, your phone or something, uh, but if you want the V1's display turned off, you can turn dark mode on. And then finally, alert persistence. This is an option for the V1 connection app itself. Basically, the idea here is uh, when the detector picks up a signal, it's going to display it on screen, and then after the signal disappears, it's going to persist and stay on screen as kind of a grayed out alert that's going to slowly fade over time. This can be particularly useful if it was maybe picking up a brief instant on shot up ahead, uh, so that you can still see the signal on screen even after the signal disappears. It persists, hence the name alert persistence. But because most people aren't going to actually want to run the V1 connection app uh, while you're driving, this I guess doesn't really matter, but that's what that option does. The next option is going to be for the savvy settings. So we'll go in here and you see we've got a couple different options here to adjust your savvy settings. Now savvy, it's a $69 accessory uh, that you can purchase for the V1. It's basically designed to help you get low speed muting, especially if you don't necessarily want to use your phone's GPS for low speed muting. Um, it plugs into your car's OBD2 port and uses that to monitor how fast you're driving. Uh, and it's got a little thumb dial so that you can set when you're driving below a certain speed, it'll just tell the V1 to mute itself. So again, low speed muting without relying on GPS and instead uh, just relying on your car's OBD2 port. Now you don't really need it uh, if you're going to be relying on your phone for low speed muting. There are a couple advantages maybe to running physical savvy which I'm not going to go into in a ton of detail here um, but if you're running with physical savvy this is going to be giving you some additional controls here on your V1. Now taking a look here we've got the option for savvy unmute and this basically says if you're driving and the detector is muting your signals uh, when you drive above the low speed muting threshold do you want the detector to unmute itself? Uh, if so you're going to have this on which is the default. Now the next option is if you want to override the savvy thumb wheel and just adjust uh, what speed the V1 is going to be muting when you're driving below that speed. This can be useful if you don't want to reach down and go in and adjust the savvy dial itself you can just adjust it alternately here uh, from the phone instead. Then going back, uh, the next option is going to be for custom frequencies. So we'll go in here and we have the ability to uh, enable custom frequencies if we want. Uh, by default, it's turned off. And again, these are going to be giving us the ability to adjust which frequencies the detector is going to be alerting us to. Uh, you can see right here, here's going to be the frequency range it scans for by default on K-band and on KA. Uh, if you want to adjust this, you can always go in here and start creating different frequency ranges that you want the detector to alert to. This could be helpful if you're seeing certain frequency ranges where the V1 is always falsing to. Uh, especially if it's a non-police frequency and you want the detector to essentially not alert you to those frequency signals, you can go in here into custom frequencies and then start uh, maybe choosing which signals you want the detector to alert to and then use that to say, you know, which signals you want the detector not to alert to. And then finally, one other quick thing to mention, as I mentioned before, this has zero impact on performance, unlike custom sweeps for the V1 Gen 1. Uh, for the V1 Gen 2, this is just choosing which signals uh, the V1 alerts you to. It doesn't have any impact to performance. Now going back, uh, the last option here is for the in the box settings. Now boxes are going to be 
similar to custom frequencies, but a little bit less aggressive. Uh, unlike custom frequencies that say don't alert at all uh, to any frequencies outside of the frequency range that I want, with boxes instead, it's basically gonna say alert normally to any frequency signals inside of the box, but anything outside of the box, I still want you to alert, but instead I just want you to mute. So by default, you'll notice there's three different boxes here for KA band. Uh, there's a box for 33.8, 34.7, and 35.5. So if you want, you can say alert to any signals in this frequency range, but then anything outside of the box, I want you to go ahead and mute it. You could also say maybe anything inside these boxes definitely unmute if it's being muted for some other reason. So you can choose that option here. And you'll notice it's also gonna be throwing a warning here about uh, not being able to use the V1 to mute these signals. You're gonna to have to be doing it through the app. If you want, you can also maybe uh, adjust the different frequency ranges. You can disable 33.8. You can maybe widen the 34.7 frequency range if you're like in New York, for example, and you've got a stalkers that tend to drift wider than the frequency range covered here. So you can adjust it as needed. But for most people, I'd say don't even bother with boxes because this is really something meant just for the V1 connection app. And again, this isn't the app that you're going to want to run while driving in the first place. You're going to want to run V1 driver or JBV1. And those also have options to run boxes if you want, plus a lot more. But if you're running a V1 connection while driving, that's what the boxes are here for. Then finally, once you're done with that, uh, we'll head back here and you'll see the profile is not saved. So we're gonna go ahead and save this profile and it's gonna go ahead and push all the settings that we want over to the V1. Now, something to note is you're not gonna wanna run V1 connection as I mentioned before while you're actually driving. And so once you're done with all the programming stuff, you're gonna wanna close a V1 connection because the V1 cannot actually connect to two different apps at the same time. So what you're gonna wanna do is you'll head over here. Uh, you'll notice that the Bluetooth icon is connected because we're connected here with the app. We're gonna go ahead and uh, force close V1 connection. You'll notice now the Bluetooth icon is gone. And then you'll be able to go over and connect with another app such as uh, V1 connection or JBV1 for the Android. You'll notice we'll go ahead and connect over here. Uh, we'll turn this off for now. And then boom, uh, we're set up here and now connected with V1 driver while driving. Now for all the V1 driver and JBV1 stuff, kind of the driving apps, again, as I mentioned, I'll cover those in separate videos. Uh, this is a quick look at uh, kind of your initial programming stuff with the V1 using your phone. For more information, head on over to the article on my website where I go over all this kind of stuff. And I also cover at the end, uh, my general recommended settings, as well as the settings that I personally run on my V1. So awesome. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and until uh, next time, happy driving and I'll see you in the next video.